This is the Sega Can't Gamer, and you are live with the MMA Hole! Mixed Martial A Holes! MMA Marshall A. No way. Oh! From the Queen Studios of New York, UFC Austin recap, Emmett versus Stevens fight week, the MMA Holes Hour with the MMA. Wonderful, wonderful, that's right. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Everybody in the chat, I need everyone in the chat to fap right now. Fap, 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 fap. 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 You had Ariel Hilwani show on earlier today, uh, the MMA hour. Well, fuck it, the MMA Olds hour. There you go. There you go. That's how we do it over here. That's how we do it over here on a Monday night. Now, we do this every Monday night. We do it Wednesday nights and Friday nights every week. And it is wonderful, wonderful. wonderful it's wonderful. good to see all of you guys in there. And gals, you all look beautiful tonight. It's a good way to start the week. The best way to start the week. And Decider 911 says, oh my fucking God, that intro is awesome to fap to. So that's right, he was fapping. Fap. Decider is fap. fapping fap. to my intro. Tonight's show. Here we go. Look at it. Just look at it over here. There's a punch to the face. There was a fight this weekend. But... Yeah! Everybody, Sean McKenzie starts off the show coming on Rhonda. Fap. Fap. Everybody, fap on Rhonda right now. Fap. Here we go. Come on, Rhonda. Come on, Rhonda. Yes. Yes. Come on, Rhonda. Fap. Fap. Everybody, fap. Right off the bat. Sean McKenzie. Kick it off tonight. I think Stevens wins by deck. <laughs> Perry wins by co. All right. Fuck John Jones. There you go. Mayweather is a pussy. Happy birthday, Anne. Justine Kish is smoking and should HMU. I am the most swole. There you go. Sean McKenzie is the most swole. And Sean McKenzie is wonderful, wonderful. wonderful Speaking wonderful. of Justine Kish, we're going to get her on the Wednesday show. She'll be coming on Wednesday show. And she'll be talking about that North Carolina fight. Where, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out her way. It was ridiculous. Thank you, Sean McKenzie, for coming on Rhonda. If you guys want to come on Rhonda, link in the description. That's how you start a show. That's how a show gets going. This show over here, we are recapping UFC Fight Night Austin. Austin? Austin? Cerrone versus Medeiros. We're going to discuss that card. There are some things to talk about because this card over here, Stevens versus Emmett, we're going to be divulging into. We're going to be some topics. 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 We're going to be doing some of that. We're going to be looking into the chat. We'll be taking some phone calls. It's going to be a swole, sexy hour. The MMA holds hour. So make sure you like the shit out of this video. Share this video. And if you don't like it, you can lick my fucking balls. Lick my balls. It's that simple. The greatest show on YouTube. The best show on YouTube. The MMA holds. Now, look at this community over here. Look at these goddamn assassins. Look at these assassins over here. These are the greatest. This is the greatest community on YouTube. It's the MMA Holes. And everyone in the chat is wonderful, wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. And we've got 10 more likes. That's right, 10 more likes. Let's make Bruce dance his fucking ass off. Like. Like. Fuck you, dislikes. Look at all these fucking crazies over here. Greg Oden Blaze, Brian Roy, just Sean McKenzie. We saw he came on Ronda already. Jay Smooth, Darth Bane, Olympia Lowlife, uh, Pensy Angler says MMA Holes. Decider 911 is here. He says we all have nice buttholes. That is true. Pulse Reloaded. JLW says 
We've came on Rhonda enough to double the Earth's population if only we came in her instead of on her. So JLW, maybe we'll do the Come In Rhonda song. It's possible. We can do that next. You never know. Anything is possible. Dreams come true on the MMA holes. I mean, what other MMA show can you ejaculate on Ronda Rousey, right? There you go. There is uh, Jokers in the chat, also known as Stewie, and I don't know that weird crew over there. They're bizarre, but welcome. Uh, Jason Wood says, tune in Wednesday for the spit roast of Justine Kish. I will finish her off once again. So there you go. Justine Kish is a friend of the show. And, uh, yeah, the last time we had her on, check it out after the stream. Justine Kish is awesome. She's a good sport. And the phone line, and that happened. That that happened. Yeah, and it was wonderful, wonderful. wonderful My wonderful. Uh, aborted child is here. It says, I wish Brian Roja went to school in, in Parkland. So there's a, a terrible Florida shooting joke. There we go. I think I dream of this, says Joey Fagater. And that's true, Joey Fagater. You do dream of this. The M M A News polls, says Boneyard Militia. The Parkland kid never would have shot me. I don't pick on anyone, says Brian Roger. Okay, it's good to know that we're starting off this show with... um. <laughs> Let's go into the card. I can't, I can't. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. I guess nothing's too soon on the MMA holes, right? Nothing's off topic over here. We don't give a fuck. All right, here we go. And listen, I'm not saying we don't give a fuck. The chat room doesn't give a fuck because they're a bunch of animals. They're a bunch of goddamn animals. Now, this card was fantastic. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a goat milk m winner. Goat milk is our UFC pick'em league over here. And we are looking out for this gentleman or young lady. I'm not sure. But the last winner. Hold on a second. Per events. Oh, shit. Look at that. It got updated. Hold on a second. No, this is goat milk. All right, per event, right? This is overall. Yeah, it is updated. Look at that shit. Okay. All right, so here we go. Here is the final winner over here. I guess I had to fucking reset. Beer Factor. I don't know if this is one that we saw the last time, but anyway, Beer Factor with three perfects, five bonuses, 10 out of 12, along with Mystic Moss, 10 out of 12. I mean, I, I see these things, for God's sakes. I see these things. But Beer Factor, if you are in the chat, okay? If you are in the chat, or if you are watching the show on the recap, what I need you to do is send me your social on social. The MMA holes at the MMA holes over here. You need to screenshot this. Check this out. Uh, picks. Let's see. Go over here. So you go to your picks on UFC pick them and you got to show me your picks. So I know it's you. Like you got to show me your picks over here. The ones that you got right and blah, 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 blah. And uh, like, so you click on last, right? Cerrone versus Medeiros. Click on it and you show me. You show me a swollenness and you did the same thing. We got two wrong because we're the best. But you got to need to send me this. Send it to at the MMA holes and I will send you your swole wristband. Congratulations, my friend. You did awesome. And we're going to be doing this again for this weekend over here. Jeremy Stevens versus a, a goddamn savage looking vampire motherfucker named Josh Emmett who is got bombs in his hands. Two guys that have bombs in their hands. Good stuff. How about this? 74% is picking Stevens in the UFC Pick'em League. That's pretty interesting. Now let's start off the show with that. Now, this is this weekend's fight. Stevens versus Emmett. 74% is picking Jeremy Stevens. And the fun fact over here is both by KO. Check that out. Both by KO. So that's interesting. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you think that at that is correct? Who would you pick? Who would you put money on in the chat? Jeremy Stevens. Or Josh Emmett, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat who you would pick. Interesting. Wow, it's a lot. It's very lopsided for Jeremy Stevens. I don't think it's a layup. Josh Emmett's really tough. All I want is a social security number. Thanks, Daddy. Says Chris and Jesse's aborted child. Only baby dicks have baby lungs. Train your 420, says Jay Smooth. B knows 202 says, How about those food fight lives, guys? Aren't they the best? Uh. Oh, no! No! Mm, Casual fan says, I appreciate it. Just take an extra one for me. Okay, go there. I got Emmett by KO, says Steve Sparks. Mm, I'll pick Emmett to win if you miss weight. This is Kenshiro Ryu. Yeah, he did miss weight the last time. It was short notice. Steve says, Boneyard uh, Militia. Ah, super chat. Sean McKenzie. Emmett hasn't been pushed. Stevens will test him. It's going to be a war. You get got to think that fight's going to end in a finish, right? And thank you, Sean McKenzie, for the super chat. Appreciate it over there. Let's get this off the screen. Look at that. Sean McKenzie making it rain. 
A Monday night. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful donation. Wonderful. I don't even have to tell you, motherfuckers. You guys have to know. Link in the description. Uh, check it out. How's your whole family? Uh, Stevens uh, will KO him, KO him with, uh, and hit him one more. Hold on. Fucking chat room's doing the same thing as it did last time. Hit him one more time once knocked out, per usual. Says Pulse Nightclub Shooter or Pulse Reloaded. This is his new name. I'm surprised he didn't change his name to the recent tragedy. They are both animals. Says Olympia Low Life. Who the fuck is that guy? Says Boneyard. Who the fuck is that guy? Okay. Marky Wahoo, what's up? What the fuck is CM Punk thinking? He's going to hate himself. I hope he doesn't call himself a mixed martial artist when he's going to be 0-2 with two first-round stoppages with under 10 uh, sig, oh, significant strikes landed. Hmm. CM Punk does have a fight coming up in Chicago. And uh, there was like rumblings about Mayweather. Let's all put that to rest. It's not happening. Bottom line, someone's getting slept for sure. Someone is getting slept in this fight over here between the Vampire Emmett versus uh, Jeremy Stevens. It's going to be a fucking interesting brawl this weekend. And as a card, it's going to be fun. We're going to be talking about that in a second. But check this out over here. Donald Cerrone versus Yancey Madero. So we're going to briefly go through this. Big win for Sage Northcutt over here with the decision. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your support. I'm coming back stronger than ever. I'm with Team Alpha Male. And these guys are doing a great job with me. They're training me on my ground game. I'm getting better. No one's really able to take me down now. And my muscles are fantastic. And uh, yeah, I got the win. It was really important to me. It feels good. And thanks you. Thank you, Mr. M Mystic Moss. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. And thank you, Mr. Goody, for losing. I do appreciate that too. And, and you are wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. We have this fight over here. Another decision. Uh, Brandon Davis gets the win. Impressive job by Brandon Davis, who came from the Contender Series. Another one over here. Check this dude out here. Curtis Melender making his UFC, de uh, UFC debut. And this guy is scary. Okay. Beating Alves. Put him away. But check this out. He's 30 years old. So he's pretty much in his prime right now. Six foot three. 170 pounds with a 76 inch reach. This kid over here. And he's got some pop. He's got some serious pop. And he took out Mr. Alves. This kid, Curtis Melender. I really want to keep an eye on him. I have a feeling he's going to be pretty special. The Vic versus Trinaldo fight wasn't all that. It went decision. Vic needed the win. He got the win. But let's talk to the meat and potatoes of the card over here, friends. Derek Lewis versus Marcin Tibora. Let's talk about the Black Beast. Let's talk about that right there, right? Hey, man. We're going in deep tonight. We're going in deep tonight. And I'm going in deep. That's right. Derek Lewis is going in deep. He's going in real deep because he was losing the fight. He was losing the fight. First round, second round. I mean, to was doing his thing. Good game plan on top of him. Just, just fucking murking him. Here comes the third round. It's not the, this is not the first time we've seen this, you know, with Derek Lewis, where he's been fucking grinded for a little while. Someone just has a good game plan imp implemented. And Derek Lewis finds a way to use that massive power, that beast, which inside of him, and puts away Marcin Tabora. Fantastic stuff over here by the Black Beast. And let's be honest, motherfuckers. Let's be honest right now. The man who is going deep, Derek Lewis, this guy is going to fight Francis Ngannou. It is a guaranteed lock. Now, they're going to move the rankings around on Wednesday, but let's look at what we got over here now. It's the only fight to make at heavyweight besides Stipe and DC. But check this out on heavyweight. Let's go zoom into this fucker. Get nice and close. Whoop. Here we go. Heavyweight division. Francis Ngannou. Or as Luke Thomas likes to say, Ngannou. Alistair Overeem for Bricio Verdum. Um, Overeem doesn't have a fight, but his, his fucking head got knocked off. Who knows what's next for him? Uh, I don't know who Overeem would fight right now, but Verdum is fighting Volkov. Dropping down to Volkov. Very risky fight. You got Kane Velasquez coming over here. Who knows? Maybe Kane Alistair. Maybe see something like that. Who knows? Or Kane could even... I don't know. Kane Alistair is something that stands out to me a little bit. Here we go. So now Curtis Blades, which is another one. You never know. Curtis Blades might get one of these guys up top. You got Mark Hunt who drops down, and here's Derek Lewis. Okay, now Derek Lewis lost to Mark Hunt. I feel he's going to skip the line. I really do feel that Derek Lewis is going to skip the line over here. And there's going to be some guys in between. And Francis in Gnu versus Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, 
will be the fight. Someone is getting hurt. Someone is getting hurt. My question to you guys, the MMA holes on the MMA holes hour, who is getting hurt? While you guys get your votes in, Nganu or Lewis, we've got 10 more likes. 10 more fucking likes. Here we go, MMA holes. We're on fire tonight. We're going to be opening up the phone line shortly. Stay tuned. I've got 10 more likes. I've got 10 more likes. Fuck you, dislikes. I've got 10 more likes. I've got 10 more likes. I've got 10 more likes. I hope the dislikes die of AIDS. Thank you, Bruce, for those wonderful, wonderful dance moves. I do appreciate it. Wonderful, them. wonderful. Uh, your Black Beast reaction was wonderful, wonderful. Swell shit right there. Yes, yeah, Steve Sparks. I get autistic. My, here's the thing, okay? And if you guys are not familiar with my fight reactions, we do fight buddies for all the fights, okay? We don't show the fights. We react to the fights. We don't pirate the fights. We react to the fights. That's not how it works over here. We have some fun. It's like a, cr- a, it's a community of fucking savages over here. This is the first MMA show that had a live chat on the screen. This is the first MMA show that's ever done that. This is the first MMA show that was fully interacted, interactive with their audience. A lot of people are ripping us off and trying to find gimmicks and do shit and do illegal shit to get over, but not the MMA holes. We are the pioneers of YouTube, and we're taking over this motherfucker. Everyone within the MMA community knows who we are. Everyone within MMA media knows who we are. We are not one to be fucked with over here, so we'll see you on Saturday as well. But the Black Beast, the Black Beast versus Francis Ngannou, well, that's something to talk about. The Punisher wrestler now. Double KO says Steven Sparks. Kane is done, says Sean McKenzie. I thought so too, but something tells me he's coming back now. Blades versus Lewis versus Walt Harris versus Nganu. Fatal four way <laughs> for the Black Weight Championship of the World, says Pulse Reloaded. Lewis gets hurt, says Bino. So Bino says he's going to get hurt. Effin has the Bisping, St. Pierre card. Both get hurt, says Almond Brothers. Yeah, someone's getting fucked up in that fight. Lewis, but not hurt. It would be a good fight, maybe by decision. So, Michael Anzalone, welcome back, Michael Anzalone! Michael Anzalone! He's back in the chat! Everybody, Fap! Fap! Welcome back! Fap! Welcome Fap. back, Michael Anzalone! Wonderful, wonderful. There you go. Get that slops is brand new. Before. Duke Chronic says, I was looking for this every fight when Fight Companion were on. I was looking for this every fight. When Fight Companions on, Duke Crown says, you looking for us? What are you, what are you looking for? You looking for? Yep, this is uh, Pensy Angler. Uh, casual fan says, I really appreciate your interaction with us. It's almost like you're my dad. Almost. Well, casual fan, I am your father. And I'm proud of you. Every time you call in, every time you chat with us, son, I am completely proud of you. Michael Anzalone, you're going to uh, get UFC 3. This is Darth Bane. They hate us because they ain't us, is Mystic Mitch. Jerry, Fight Companion, was the first time you see interview uh, internet viewers. The first time you see internet viewers. Now, JRE was the first one to do what's called the Fight Companion, right? And the Fight Companion did inspire us. And I'll always give credit to the people that inspire me. I will always do that. And I said from the very beginning that Joe Rogan, with his podcast, I thought was brilliant what he did. I just felt it was lacking. And by lacking... There was no interaction with the audience. There was a live chat going on, and it's not there. And there was just no interaction. It was just a straight-up podcast. And the thing I didn't like, too, is he didn't really do live commentary. It was just a bunch of him just bullshitting with the guy smoking weed and drinking, which is cool. It's really cool, and they do, they do great. They do fantastic. So I'm not knocking that. I just felt like there was more to be interacting with the audience. Like, I really felt like that's what we had to do. So what I did was literally, bang, I would slap a fucking display on there and put a live chat. I was the first MMA channel to do it. I want you guys to find a channel that did it before me. I was the first one to do it. We interact like no one else. We have shit that pops up. We have songs. It's, it's a fun interactive show. It's all about having a good time over here. So credit to Joe Rogan for coming up with the idea. But credit to me for advancing it and making it even more sexy. And trust me on this one. We've only been live for a year and a half on YouTube. And we're just getting started. As we're cruising to 8,000 subscribers. So thank all of you guys for hanging in there. 
Uh, they hate us because they ain't us. Ba, 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 ba. No chat and no nachos. <laughs> Pulse reloaded. Yeah. I mean, I, I can go on and on. I have a lot to talk about with that whole thing. There was a little thing. You could check it back on the last Fight Buddies. We did a little bit of a raid and we completely took over another channel. And the reason why we did it is because what they were doing on that channel is completely wrong. It was against everything that a, a content creator believes in, okay? With copyright infringement. Like, people can go to jail for what they're doing over there. And then they're trying to say, we're doing it for you guys. And then collecting donations for distributing other people's content. It is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing what these people are doing. So, I don't know. If you want to go see that raid, it's during the Vic. The James Vic fight over here. James Vic and Trinaldo. Check out this fight over here. You can go back to our fight buddies. And you can see it for yourself if you missed it. But this fight over here, it was lackluster. It was, it was a decision fight. We decided to get a little bored. I'll give credit to Jay Pro. Jay jumps in the chat. He's like, fuck it. Let's go raid. We raided. And, we were, and it just so happens they have a live chat now. Oh, shocker. You know, one on one shocker. Shoulder, Vladimir. You're the shoulder, and you're gonna Vladimir. Vladimir. You're the fucking army to come take them belts off me. We are the MMA holes. It's true. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. That's right. Expect us. Okay, so I stole that, but this is a community. <laughs> ha. Glad to see the prophecy came true. The Black Beast versus the Suspect Beast. Mm -hmm. There you go. Vladimir, thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. You're wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. I appreciate all the supporters of the MMA holes. You guys are awesome. That's right. So he is the truth. The Black Beast is back. The Black Beast is back. I'm curious to see what the rankings are. I'm very, very curious uh, to see what the rankings are. Super Short chat. McKenzie! Nacho cheese comb drinking jackasses. <laughs> you know, it was funny. There was a comment during the show, and I did watch back our raid. I was dying laughing. They were so triggered. It was hysterical. But um, there was one part where they're like, yeah, these guys, they draw dicks on their faces and boobies. We would never do that. And then within like the next five minutes, they're like, if you give me $25, I'll put my fat face in the nacho dip. Come on, guys. Put in $25, and I'm going to dunk my fat face in the nacho <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. The, and the nacho cheese, they were going to put their fucking... And, and the best part is his face was bigger than the actual bowl. So I actually wanted to throw 25 bucks in to see how he would squeeze that big fat moon face of his into the fucking bowl. It's such an L. The show is an L. They're going to get shut down regardless. So listen, I like to play with my food. You know, they like to eat it. But I like to play with my food. Over here, we've went after every show in MMA. Karen Bryant fucking hates us. Luke Thomas hates us. Fucking Ariel Hawani doesn't hate us. His company hates us. He actually says he likes what we're doing. We've had UFC fighters on, Bellator fighters on. They're not going to have any fighters on. They're just going to sit there and burp into a microphone. Thanks for the call, man. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Yeah, if you want to donate, donate. What are we donating to? You have two fucking screens on, on the corners showing pirated shit. What is the donations for? Were, were people too stupid to just go on the internet? You can get free fights with no problem. With no donations. You could go on there. You could go on there. There's so many websites where you can get these live streams and you don't have to donate for it. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. I don't know. Anyway, move on. Check this out over here. So the Black Beast is moving on. And I say Francis Ngannou. That's what I want to fucking see. Now let's talk about this. Cowboy Cerrone and Yancey Medeiros. Cowboy Cerrone and Yancey motherfucking Dar Maderos over there. Check these two out. This is a good, good, good fucking scrap for a couple of seconds, basically. It went one round going into the second round, and boom. Cowboy does this. Bang! Right into his fucking face. Look at that face. Now, some people are saying it was a dive. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah? I don't know. Cowboy, Cowboy cracked him. Cowboy cracked him. Um... The one thing I can say is this, and I'm not saying it was a bad stop in any way. I am not saying it's a bad stop in any way. But I did notice Yancey Medeiros has been in this situation before, and he's come back and won. So he looked like he got cracked. He was fucked up doing the deer dance back down to the floor. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe he could get out of it. But let's be honest. I think it was a decent stop. I really do. And Cowboy gets a big win against a formidable opponent. And these guys love each other. Now, there's something weird that happens. Let's go to Instagram. There's something a little strange that happened. Okay, Instagram. There we go. Check.
check this out over here. Go to the gram. Okay. Uh, this is Ariel, Mike Perry. I didn't see that whole interview. I got to check that shit out. Yeah, check that shit out. Okay, let's go to, mm-hmm. Uh, Cowboy. Cowboy Cerrone over here. And here we go. Now, Yancey Medeiros was getting down and dirty with Cowboy's grandmother. Oh. What is this about? Look at this. Squatting. And giving some love to Cowboy's grandmother. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. After Cowboy Cerrone put Yancey Medeiros away, this happens. Hmm. Fap. How hard do you think Yancey Medeiros was? What do you think in the chat? 10 being the hardest and 1 being the softest. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. Yancey Medeiros is now dating Cowboy Cerrone's mother, grandmother. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Jay Smooth says he smashed. I watched Cowboy punch her in the face with that monster can. There you go. The older woman need love too. Chris is Sean McKenzie. <laughs> Yancey and Nate ran a train on her out in Denver. It's all good. This is Marky Wahoo. Nana's need love too. Or he was concussed. Yancey needed an a the Asian ref, says Lonely Night. <laughs> yeah. To put a, <laughs> put a little of this in the cage, right? Put a little, little this. Yeah, I can't do the heart. Anyway, that's the closest heart you're going to get. That's right, Yancey could have used that in the cage. Gilf, says, the 10, says fake ID. Raz says that he, he was very, very hard. Uh, Bino, says four semi-chub. So a four. Not flaccid, says casual fan. 11, so Jackson Schultz, says harder than anything. Right now we're taking a vote. And H says a 12. Holy shit, and a happy birthday. Fap. Happy birthday to NH right now. I'm going to open up the phone lines. Now, what I want you guys to do is this. I want you to call up and I want you to sing happy birthday to NH. NH is in the chat. I want you to call and sing happy birthday to good friend of the show, NH, one of the seven percenters over there. And uh, let's get that party going. Let's get that party going right fucking now. So there is that card over there. Big win for Cowboy Cerrone. What is next for Cowboy Cerrone? We'll talk about it in Topics. That's right. We have the phone lines open. I want you guys to call in and sing to the beautiful Ann H because it is her birthday. And congratulations to Ann H. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Congratulations to Ann H because we said to Ann, we were like, listen, Ann, when Cowboy wins, we need you to post something. And by the way, thank you, Brady Ferguson. <laughs> proposing this which it looks really fucking real <laughs> it, it's not far off it looks pretty real so there i am i, I got my tattoos lasered off and here i am in karaoke i'm at a karaoke bar singing and dancing thank you if you guys want to post any of that shit bang right over here at the mma holes and check that out over there uh, mm -mm -mm. i got the weirdest fucking viewers i love each and every one of you i'm gonna scroll down where are you and here we go you are live with the mma holes What's your name and where are you from? Hey, Chris. It's uh, Christian Beasley. Hey, Christian. Now, be, uh, Christian, before your uh, point, I would like to know, would you like to sing Happy Birthday to Ann H? <laughs> um, I'm actually a little bit under the weather, so mm. I don't think you guys want to hear my shrieking. All right. Well, let me know in the chat <laughs> if you guys like want to hear. over the phone. <laughs> let me know in the chat if you want to hear Christian <laughs> Beasley hear uh, Happy Birthday in a shrieky voice. But, uh, Christian, what's on your mind, man? Hey, man. Uh, so I just wanted to give a call. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, thank you to the uh, to the chat room, um, to you guys, to the MMA holes, because you guys helped me uh, through a hard time. I uh, got some good laughs and uh, they've been really good for me. So I'm yeah. um, getting back to getting back to the normal uh, Christian Beasley. Sure. Now, Christian, I know you called him before, and I don't want to pry into your business, but is everything all right, man? You, say, you, you said you came from a funeral and everything like that. Is everything okay? Yeah, man. I uh, I lost my buddy. Um, oh, shit. Sure. And it was it was really quite surprising. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody saw it coming, but uh, you never really know with these things. You never really know what somebody's going through. So it was it was a little rough there for a little while, but oh, I'm making a comeback, man. So yeah. that's 
just trying to honor his memory in the right way, you know? Now, if if you don't you don't have to answer this question, but I'm gonna ask you anyway because it's something it's a topic that I'm fascinated about. Was it a suicide? Yeah, it was suicide. It was, okay. So this is a yeah, topic. Yeah, he, uh, he hung. Oh yeah, my. he hung himself. Oh my god, that's hard. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry to hear. Yeah. I don't mean to pry too much into it, but the reason why I asked is Oh, it's cool, man. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, it, it's just it is what it is, you know, mm. like uh it's it helps to talk about it. So that's what I've uh, what I've realized. It I helps to, to talk about it with friends and family and, you know? Sure. Just kind of mourn together and grieve together and just kind of grow from from this loss, you know? Mm. Now, this is a serious topic and we've brought this up a couple uh, a couple of times and I'm, I'm hoping that we can bring you some joy even though we're bringing you down for a second but I'm hoping we can bring you some joy when the show is on and we talk about silly stuff and even though they say stupid shit in the chat let's be honest everyone you know hit me with the ones guys if you uh you know shout out to Christian Beasley over here. he's awesome but um it is this, yeah man this is a and I yeah, and I ahead. would like to say a big thank you to you guys because I I always Always, I laugh my ass off every time I watch the chat. I mean, mm -hmm. there can, there has never been a time where I haven't had a good laugh, or you know, it's a therapy laugh. So sure. they they help kind of just uh, put a bright brighten my mood, you know, and kind of just just add some positivity and and uh, enlighten to my life, you know. Sure, sure. Now, um, uh, I, go ahead, go ahead, keep your thoughts. Oh, go ahead. I did want to mention, uh, so remember when we talked about Brian Ortega versus uh, Frank Edgar? Mm -hmm. Seems like we're, we're going to see that happening. It, yeah. Here soon. Ortega versus Edgar is UFC 222, right? 222. It's the co-main yeah. event. So what are your thoughts on that fight? Dude, uh, so I, first of all, I'm really excited because Chief Sid is the man. I mean, that dude, he makes jiu-jitsu fun. Sure. Everybody thinks everybody's like, oh, boo, bro. Why did it go to the ground? Like, stand him back, back up. I want to see him strike. I want to see something exciting. No, nah, but T-City brings it, man. He brings that, uh, like, an excitement factor to the grappling. Like, you never know. That guy can lock up a submission at any moment. I mean, he got Cub Swanson with a flying uh, guillotine, man, up mm -hmm. against the fence. I mean, what do you ever see that? Mm -hmm. So, I'm first, first and foremost, I'm really excited. Uh, secondly, I think that Frankie Edgar... I mean, he really is like one of the one of the better fighters of all time. Sure. I mean, right up there. I mean, being BJ Penn, some of the greats, you know. So, um, having this savvy veteran like him, it's going to be a big challenge. It's going to be a big test for uh, for Brian Ortega to see see if he's ready for that for that crack at the title. Uh, if he gets past Frankie, man, it's going to it's going to be tough for for Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Yeah, well, listen, Frankie, I mean, every time you think, uh, is he on his way out? He just proves everyone wrong. This guy is a goddamn legend. He really is a legend of the sport. And it's funny, when you look at a guy like this, and I met him, uh, a great guy, you never would think it. You know, you would never think it looking at him, but he is a badass. He really is a badass. He, yeah, has, his, he has his hands full, though, in this fight. He really does have his hands full at this fight, but he's still the answer, right? So you got to think. Yeah. He, he comes up with the answer. I mean, it's, there's no really better way to, to describe his fighting style because um, I remember when he fought Cub Swanson when he was uh, down uh, when he first was uh, coming into the featherweight division. People were like, "Oh, well, he's going to be undersized even at featherweight. He's a true bantamweight, and he's still going to have a he's going to lose uh, some of that speed factor that he had at lightweight." Mm -hmm. And he proved everybody wrong. He's like, "Man, it doesn't matter if you're like bigger than me. I can still take you down. I can still smash and." ground and pound you on the ground you know like mm -hmm. it just does not matter with frankie he he where there's a will there's a way you sure. know and that's basically what it is with him so uh, if i had to put my money on it i'm gonna have to go with frankie man just because frankie's just he's proven he's been through the fire and i think he if he he wouldn't have taken this fight and he didn't think he had a, a route to win so i'm gonna have to go with frankie on that one okay but it should be a really exciting fight Mm -hmm. And he has the defensive jujitsu uh, necessary, I think, to to kind of just get out of those trouble spots. Yep. But nonetheless, it will be an exciting fight. There you go, Frankie Edgar. So thank you for the call. Appreciate it, man. We'll see you in the chat. Alrighty. All right, there you go. Christian Beasley calling in here. Now, this is the fight I really wish would have been a headlining fight of a fight night. I really wanted to see that. I want to see this fight, too. I'm actually very interested in this fight. And they throw together this shit over here. 
we're going to be going into detail with UFC 222, which is literally right around the corner. But this is, yeah, I'm more excited to watch Edgar versus Ortega, too. There's a couple other things on here we'll talk about, but this, what is this? I just don't, I don't get it. Anyway, let's go back over here. And there is a fight that's happening this weekend. Okay. And there it is, Josh Emmett versus Jeremy Stevens. A lot of people going back and forth. It looks like a lot of people are going Stevens for the win in this one. And this card that's happening this weekend is going to be badass. I cannot wait to do a fight, buddies. I cannot wait to see you guys. Who in the chat? will be part of the Fight Buddies on Sunday, or Saturday, I should say. Saturday, it's going to be an early one over here, so you guys could get your days going, or nights, or if you're overseas, it's, it's a little easier to watch. But yeah, it is uh, starting a little bit earlier over here. It's on Fox. It's only a four-fight main card. It's going to be a quick Fight Buddies. How many people in the chat will be here? Drop in the ones. Let me know if you're going to be here for that wonderful, wonderful fight night, because it's going to be good. It's going to be banging this card over here. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to touch into a little segment that I like to call 10 more likes. You thought I was going to say topics. 10 more likes. If you haven't subbed, subscribe to the GOAT, the MMA Hole. 10, 10 more likes. likes. Fuck you, dislikes. That's right. I hope all those dislikes die and evade. There's only three of them, but there's 41 likes. Thank you so much. Show me Kenzie, Kenshiro Ryu, Almond Bro, Double uh, JLW is going to be here as well. Vladimir, Steve Sparks, Mystic Mitch. Awesome stuff. I cannot wait to see you. Uh, Marky Wahoo lives here now. Steve Johnson says, every kid has a goddamn show now. Maybe I should start one and give away U.S. secrets. <laughs> I'll be in Russia faster than Snowden, says uh, Steven Johnston. I'm a half a while, hour away from Orlando. Best believe I'll be in this chat, so casual fan will be here. All right. So this chat over here, if you are new to this, this community of, of lunatics over here, and credit to you guys. For the most part, you are very respectful, respectful to Christian Beasley over there, Christian Beasley. And, and I just want to say that um, it is tough. You know, that whole – suicide thing you know and especially if it's a friend or a family member i mean that is a tough pill to swallow so christian we have your back man the mma holes have your back anytime you need to vent or fucking blow off some steam this is the place to go hang out with this chat room over here because we're like a big fucking retarded dysfunctional family right look at us we're a bunch of morons over here but we have some sort of heart buried away deep inside of our chesticles and we have respect the whole topic of suicide I am fascinated by it. I feel that people have to uh, pay attention, you know, to your family, to your friends. I feel like we have to really take another look. And when someone's reaching out, sometimes someone in front of you could be blatantly reaching out. Even looking at that, that shooter in Florida. The kid was a fucking psychopath. But he was reaching out before that. We need to figure out a way to really pay attention to our surroundings, to our loved ones, our friends and families. We need to listen to people. And I think if we can communicate a little bit better as a society, less of these tragedies will happen. So from me to you guys, my thoughts go, and prayers go out to all of the people who have lost people, friends and family within the last couple of weeks, months, years. It's a sad thing. And, and hopefully um, we, can, we can slow down the stats and have a more civilized society and a more a better communicating society and maybe things will get better so that is the serious moment of the mma holes let's do a little bit of topics let's get back to the fun i'm gonna cry and i don't want to be like jimmy kimmel topics motherfucking topics let's go motherfuckers i'm gonna open up the phone lines after topics fucking go all right, here we go. Topics, topics. So not scared, Cowboy Cerrone warns Khabib Nurmaga Madoff, I'm coming for the UFC lightweight title from Bloody Elbow. Now, let's. we're going to go th quickly through these topics. We're going to open up those phone lines. I do want you guys to sing happy birthday to Ann H, if she's still in here. Yes, I hope so. I hope she's still in here. But let's talk about this right now. Cowboy Cerrone finally gets a win back at 170. Probably belongs at a 165 weight class. Doesn't exist. So, does Cowboy Cerrone deserve a shot at the title at 155? There's a bunch of killers at 155 saying there, saying there. But Cowboy brings he brings the eyeballs, right? He brings the views. 
Cowboy Cerrone going back to 155 after that beating he took from RDA. Does he belong? Is Should he be a contender for 155? There's going to be Khabib. There's going to be Tony. Say the winner of that. Would you like to see the winner face Cowboy? Let me know in the chat with a yes or no. Let me know right now as we go through topics. Keep on liking this video. 60 people watching. What's going on? Friends and family. Cry top. Okay, I believe you casual fans smoke weed Beasley. Uh, my name is Steve Johnston. Okay. And I'm black. Okay, there you go. And uh, still here. Frank Bavon in late with the MMA holes. What's going on, Frank? Good to see you here. Uh, no. So Jay Smooth says, no, not yet. Cowboy will have to beat a top 10 first at lightweight. So then probably a contender. Sparks says one more. Steve Red or Brown. Uh, Jesus Khabib doesn't even have the chance for the title yet. Donald slow down and can only fap so fast as W. So there you go. There you go. Fap. And H was definitely fap. f fapping. So I see a lot of no's over here. Joe JLW says no. Michael Hazo says no. Mystic Mitch says only way Cowboy gets the title is in a Michael Bisping situation. So he say no. Jason with no. Fake ID Ryan says no. Cowboy versus Connor at 160 pounds is Sean McKenzie. So there you go. Yes, Cowboy still is great record in 155. So Ken Shearer Ryu says. All right. So a lot of no's. And uh, there you go. So, man, this no's Jackson Schultz. Mm, Cowboy versus Perry. This is Marky Wahoo. Cowboy's better contender at 155. If you can make the weight, I guess you can make that argument, right? Mm, so there you go. Let's go on to the next. Topics. Topics. Let's do it. Topics. The next topics. All right. Stop it. Stop it. Everyone's just stop it. Stop the graphic. Stop everything. All right. Here we go. Go over here. Okay. So this is a story. Another SB uh, nation over here. Bloody elbow. Good friends of mine says uh, tapped out. Is the UFC just an aging Gen X fad? Okay. When the UFC made the move to Fox, they were expected to bring in a whole new demographic. Instead, as a ratings dwindle, it seems they stuck with the same core fan base they had a decade ago. One that's closer in inching closer to 50 and further from 30. This was interesting. And good uh, check out Bloody Elbow over there. Go check out their uh, shit their website over there and they put together an interesting conversation. And I, I want to open up this conversation because I kind of thought the same thing too. You remember tap out and affliction and all that shit. I remember it. And I know a lot of people in the chat remember that stuff. And some people might even wear some of that stuff still, but they're saying that their audience is kind of stuck right now in the older generation. Now we have some younger peeps in the chat. Okay. So I want to know from the young people and the old people, is the UFC doing a bad job trying to cater to the youngsters over here? And they're just kind of chilling with their fan base now, and they're not growing. They're not expanding to the youth. Let me know in the chat what you think about that, because I think it's interesting. I don't know how many kids right now are talking about the UFC, even though we have a young crowd over here. Most of our demographic is in the 30s, in the 40s over here, and late 20s. So that's the most of our demographic. That's the bulk of our demographic so let me know what the chat room thinks i want to see what you guys think on that mm -hmm. after mask died tap out wasn't the same mask who rocky dennis <laughs> stupid says john doe they sold it for bucks tap out those three dudes that's right vladimir you you know what i'm talking about yeah tap out one of them died and i don't know what happened might be true so can't you write you says might be true might be the true, the younger men, 20 to 30, are more into gay rappers, gay music, gay K-pop, <laughs> watching soybeans make milk, ETC, ETC. So there you go. Uh, douche, uh, douche canoe shirts. This is Allman Brothers. Jason was laughing at Tap Out. I did have a Tap Out shirt that I retired many moons ago, but I did have one. Mm, did you know that the white guy, a white dude started Jerry Curl? I did not. Tap out an affliction got taken over by Muscle Farm and Torque and Reebok, says John Doe. Doe, if that's the case, it's interesting. I know they still make affliction shit. I've seen people still rocking it. Uh, look, if it holds true that Connor got so much money he could give 
Two fucks about fighting. I think Dana White must be thinking with his 500 million. CM Punk versus Ganu. Says decide a Reebok is a wreck. Maybe under uh, Armour under Armour or Nike. Says Michael Hasdo. People who wear tap out shirts ask, do you even UFC, bro? Uh, yeah, it's funny when you do go to some of these fights, right? And I've been to a bunch of these UFC fights. You do see a lot of guys rocking the tap out shirts. I rock the MMA old shirt a little bit better, a little cooler. WME is a run by ex-government officials and talent agents. This is Steve Johnson. Yeah, WME. Yeah, I think they're dropping the ball over here. We have an influx of undedicated fans that can name more than can't name more than ten fighters. Is Vladimir? You know what? I do notice with some of the younger audience that that is jumping in. I do notice, and people are saying the casuals. You know, and there is an older crowd that that people say. I mean, yeah, they're just getting in on it. But what's funny, what I always find funny about it is the people that jump on. And, and uh, listen, I'm a fan of Connor. I'm a fan of Connor, but I'm a fan of mixed martial arts. Like, I love a lot of fighters. You know, I'm, I'm invested. You saw me with the Black Beast this weekend when I'm punching my chair. I'm, I'm fucking hammer fisting my chair in excitement. I'm a fucking nut job fan. And I'm not saying everyone should be like that. But without a Conor McGregor and stuff like that, without these crazy circus fights, you kind of don't cater to the casual fan. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the UFC right now. I don't understand the direction. You got Brock Lesnar that's probably going to come back. You got John Jones who's been suspended over and over and over again. You got Stipe versus DC. I like it. It's fun. But is it right to hold up the divisions? I don't know. Does it help the sport? I don't know. So maybe they are making a lot of mistakes. I think WME will have MMA and boxing cards as Duke Chronic. And that is going to happen, Duke Chronic. If you didn't see the Roy Jones Jr. Uh, fiasco, there was. It was a mixture. It was like boxing, MMA, boxing, MMA, boxing, MMA. That is the future of the UFC, of course, because boxing fans, let's be honest, even though we have a swole 60 people watching right now, boxing fans are where it's at. That's a huge audience over there. I'm not the biggest boxing fan. I like boxing. I enjoy any combat sport. I'll watch anything. I'll comment and give my reaction to it. But when it comes down to it, mixed martial arts is the shit for me. Fuck the Black Beast, Christopher, once and for all. What? They will eventually have celebrity boxing matches just like MTV. So Steve Johnson, tap out, is now with WWE, Lonely Neckbeard. Is that true? It would be a better fit if it is. The belts have to be at catch weights, says Duke Chronic. DC against Stipe is awesome. Quit bitching. I'm not bitching. I like the fight, but let's be honest. Look what they're doing there with the fight. It's a super fight, right? Super fight. It does hold up two weight classes. doesn't really get much accomplished. I am not complaining. I am not complaining because I wanted to see McGregor fight Mayweather in a cage, you know, because of the show, for fo show purposes, to get the ratings and talk about circus shit. So, and as a fan, I would like to see that. So, I, I am not opposed from... Circus fights. But does it help the UFC? Vladimir! Vladimir Flex! When people ask me who is one of your favorite UFC fighters, I say Tank Abbott nine times out. Mm -hmm. Of ten, they say, Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> like, who the? <laughs> who the fuck is That's what they say over there. Who the fuck is that guy? It's crazy. It, it is crazy. I like, and I have to give credit to, and I let me open up the phone. I got how many more topics do I have? Let me run through the topics so I can't open up the phone lines. We're gonna do a speed round of topics over here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, Tap Dazzle UFC. Uh, Nate Diaz, you guys saw this right over here. Nate Diaz smoking that fucking ganja during the Maderos and Yancey fight. Look at this guy. He's just puffing. He's like, yeah, man. Look at me. I'm on camera, man. I'm on camera. I'm like. What the fuck? What the fuck? What is going on? Jesus Christ. MMA Junkie dropping in copyright music over here. What is going on? MMA Junkie. Cut that shit out. Anyway, that was to MMA Junkie. Anyway, fuck it. Anyway, look at this. Here's the next story over here. Uh, Theodoro over here. And we actually spoke about this before. And this is a bloody elbow as well. Theodoro decided that he was going to be a... Uh, is there a picture over here? I don't think there's a picture. Uh, fuck, let's just go back. Theodoro was in Invicta, okay? Went to Invicta and decided to be a ring man, okay? Here is something interesting, guys. Here he, he says he's going to be a ring man. He held up a card, right? And uh, a ring card, and he became a ring guy. 
Now, let me know. Invicta is full of women. It's a women's organization over there. Do you think it's right? And I cannot wait to hear your opinion on this. Eli Elijah, I can't even say his name. Elias Theodoro uh, decided to hold up the card and prance around a cage as a ring man. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. And, I mean, I guess if it is a full MMA, a women's MMA organization, I guess so. It's like going to Hooters and seeing a man serve you. That makes sense. Okay, guys. Here we go in the chat. Let's go. Let me know what you think. A ring man. And as you guys give me that answer, here's Kat Zingano in a bikini. All right? To straighten things out over here. Here she is. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Kat Zingano. Thank God. Thank God you're in a bikini. You're looking wonderful, wonderful. What do you guys think about... Oh, Ring Boy. There you go. What do you guys think about Ring Boys as we stare at Kat Zingano? Let me know in the chat. G-Man Mule. G-Man Mule is wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Low-key fags is Vladimir. <laughs> oh, super chat. G-Man Mule. All you newcomers, check out Fight Pass. There you go. All you newcomers, check out Fight Pass. I like Fight Pass. Fight, Fight Pass is wonderful, wonderful. No hate on Fight Pass. I'm down with it. It's Kat Zangano. What do you guys think about Ring Boys? Uh, JLW says, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no free stream all day. Uh, every day. Save your money. So Jay Smooth says, no with the Fight Pass. Meow. Says, do chronic. Equality, motherfuckers. Bring me to Ring Boys. <laughs> so Ken Shiro, Ken Shiro says... <laughs> <laughs> and there's Marky Wahoo with the lick my balls. Lick my balls. The only ring man should be Cyborg. <laughs> Tank Abbott is dead, says Sean McKenzie. Rest in peace. Boyish upper body, but mess, says Jay Smooth. No, 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 says Steve Sparks. Chris is indeed a miniature Max Kellerman. Uh, <laughs> you think I look like Max Kellerman? Hmm. Hmm. That's the boxing guy, right? I think that's the boxing guy. I think so. I'm going to keep on looking at Kat Zingano. Uh, left my fucking ass off. Let's see. On the cat came back. That's right. Kat Zingano is coming back. Now, okay. Let's look at this picture over here. Kat Zingano, who is no... She's no slouch when it comes to showing off the goods. Right? Kat Zingano. She banged out. I think she has a, she's has got a couple of kids or something like that. I don't know. She's a mom. She's got some big ass shoulders and some traps. and uh, Not traps, but triceps. Kat Zingano. Okay. In the chat right now. You're not banned Deathstroke. I see you, my man. Don't get nervous. I see you over there. I see you in that chat. You are not banned. Kat Zanganu. Let's give her the rating right now. Okay? The 1 out of 10. I'm Kat. So now, I'm not a big fan of muscle. Like, like muscle in my women. But I don't think she's... I don't think she's horrible. Right? She's not a big fan of muscle. And, and the shoulders being bigger than mine is... uh Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Jason was, was built like a dude. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it. I'm going to give Kat Zingano. I'm going to give her a 6 out of 10. She's over 500. I'm going to go 6 out of 10 over here. Because if you look, like you go kind of... She's got big... Big lap too, which is... I don't know. Maybe if you go under tit down, she's all right. And then tit up, she's this is a little bit of a problem. But what do you guys give her in the chat? Let's get a rating over here on Kat Zingano. Uh, Deathstroke says thank you. Okay, uh, do chronic. We love you, Deathstroke. By the way, seven eight point five says B knows a six says Steve Sparks four twenty says J Smooth seven point five says Mystic Mitch Almond Brothers seven nine if she's got a nice butthole says Decider hmm. wonderful, wonderful. eight says Edward hey they're pretty they're pretty high these scores B Bikini Bot is a six point nine out of ten says Brian Roiger eight nine ten is Movie Star says Do Chronic mm -mm -mm -mm. there we go five point five. 420 again. Three says Boneyard Militia. A seven. Uh, let's see. Deathstroke says if she's a tranny, I'll hit that and give her a reach around. So that's... <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Michael Anzalone dropping a 10 for Sean McKenzie says a 6.5. And Deathstroke says a solid seven. So we were rating Kat Zane over here. In her, and hey, she's in great shape. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know what we're going to do. All right, let's open up the phone lines at 516. 522-0267. It's right over there. Thank you guys for the donations. I appreciate it every time. You guys are all wonderful, wonderful. We're going to go four more minutes over here. It is the MMA Holes Hour. If you guys feel frisky, we can extend the show. It depends on the phone lines, and it depends on you guys. 
the MMA holes. Where is the dramatic song? Get your phone calls in right now. Speak your word. It is late. It's 1130 over here on the East Coast, but we don't give a fuck. There are 62 people watching right now. The MMA holes. If you did not subscribe, what the fuck are you waiting for? Right there. 49 likes. Whoa, they're calling like crazy. Oh, my God. You're alive with the MMA holes. What's your name and where are you from? It's your boy Christian again. Hey, Christian. Welcome Guess back. Guess what? What's up? Guess what? What? I'm going to do my best pink impersonation. Okay. For the singing. <laughs> Wait, so are you going to sing to NH? I sure am. Oh, my God. NH, get ready. It's about to go down. Get ready for the AIDS, motherfuckers. I, I can't wait. Now, Christian, <laughs> I'm fucking bumped up about this. I'm going to put Ann on here. Now, before you do sing, Christian, okay, uh, I want to let everyone know it is Ann H's birthday. So go subscribe to Ann H. There's a super chat coming in over here. Uh, so we're going to grab that super chat as well. Thank you for the super chats. Ann H is over here. It is her birthday. Chill Zone at Chill Zone 95. Go give her a follow. It's her birthday. Aww, super chat. Here's the super chat. Sean McKenzie says. Justine Kish is a 10 save a horse ride this cowboy. <laughs> Sean McKenzie's playing hard. He's playing horrible. He wants uh, Justine Kish, who will be on Wednesday night. So get your quish, uh, questions ready. All right. Christian Beasley's live on the phone right now. Getting ready to sing to Ann H. Here we go, Christian. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll sing. I'll sing it right. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy <laughs> birthday, dear Anne. Happy birthday to you. Fat. Hey, there, there you go. go. I love that. That's awesome. Christian Happy Beasley. Happy birthday, Ann. Thank you, you Christian. You are a rocking 7% of the chat. Had to do it for the had to do it for the fam. That's right. Ann H. Happy birthday to Ann H. Thank you, Christian, for the call. I don't do it for the fame. I do it for the fam. That's right. <laughs> All right, be good. There you go, Christian Beasley. Get your phone lines in. Calls in right now. It's Ann H's birthday. Chill Zone, the biggest Cowboy Cerrone fan. We need to, I really want to get Ann H hooked up with Cowboy, man. That would be fucking awesome. Here she is, all dolled up and ready for action. Look at this beautiful woman over here. Ann H calling in. Let's go. Everyone's fapping in the chat right fucking now as Ann H, it's her birthday. And she is one of the greatest MMA holes of all time. And thank you, Christian Beasley. Uh, it's kind of awkward. We're just starting. Uh, Staring at her selfie. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. One-Eyed Billy is calling in. One-Eyed Billy, welcome to the show. What's up, Chris? I uh, I got something I want to talk about. Okay. I'm going to be doing something crazy, and I want you to be there. Okay. It sounds good. I'm going to beat down Francis Nagaganu. Wait a second. You are going to beat down Francis Nagaganu? No way. Yes, sir. Me and him is going to duke it out. I'm going to get a bippity pop the one, two, and maybe the five, six. Oh, my God. Now, how are you going to be doing this? You're going to be calling him out. What is, is this going to be a Twitter beef and then into the cage? How are you going to get the man, oh. Francis Ngannou? I'm calling him out now. This is one odd bill, and I'm coming for you, Francis Ngannou. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hold on. And Kalabib. I want, I want Kalabib, too. All right. So... Francis Ngannou, we have him on the screen right over here. Now, Francis Ngannou is a big man. Uh, he's 31 years old, 6 foot tall, 250 pounds with an 83-inch reach. I mean, are you a little nervous about this fight? No, I think I'll just, I'll just choke him out with my dick, Chris. I'll, I'll just whip <laughs> yeah. off the anaconda, whap, whap. <laughs> All right. And now you're calling out Khabib, too? Yeah, I want Khabib. Kabaliv. All right, so Kabaliv, who's fighting Tony Ferguson, are you just going to wait around, let that fight happen, and you're going to take out Kabaliv? Uh, honestly, I think I'm going to wait until they're fighting, and mm. I'm going to run in there butt naked, and I'm going to whoop them both. All right. Butt naked with my fat, fat rolls jiggling. Nice. That, that actually is pretty fun. Let me know in the chat if you want to see this. Now, one more thing. Uh, one Eye Billy's live on the, the, the MMA holes. Uh, Ann H. is her birthday. Would you like to sing a happy birthday to Ann H.? It would be my pleasure. Okay, here we go. I'm ready. Mm. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy 
Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy birthday, NH. Happy motherfucking goddamn birthday to you. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That was nice. That was good. That was that was really good. Actually, I didn't know you had a voice like that. It's it's unbelievable. Well, thanks, Chris. I've been working on it for a long, long time. There you go. All right, when I Billy, thank you for the call. There we go. When I Billy, all right. <laughs> Ann H's birthday. Check this out over here. This is an awesome thing. We asked Ann. We said if Cowboy wins the fight, Ann H is the number one Cowboy Cerrone <laughs> fan ever. Ann H dropped the picture over here. This is like, honestly, Ann, this is my favorite picture over here. We're going to open up the phone lines. Sing to Ann H right now. Ann H is a wonderful, wonderful MMA hole. And she is great. Uh, <laughs> you guys love One Eye Billy. It seems like One Eye Billy is a. A fan favorite. I actually have One Eye Billy's number over here, so I know when he calls because he does. Um, he do, he delivers every time. NH needs a lot of semen. Is decider One Eye Billy is awesome. Says Sean McKenzie. Uh, yeah, I think One Eye Billy might be a regular. <laughs> Long time KKK member on the phone. Says Jay Smooth. So there you go. NH, happy birthday, NH. I have to say, um, there there is no better way. To celebrate your birthday, I, I celebrated my 40th, which was last March. I'm turning 41, which is ridiculous, on the MMA holes. So how about that? There's no better place to spend a birthday. You are live with the MMA holes. What's your name and where are you from? Yeah, you know who the fuck it is. It's Darth Corgan. Oh, my God. Darth Corgan calling in. Uh, <laughs> Darth, uh, welcome back to the show. Now, I, I have a feeling, since it is Darth Corgan... I have a feeling that you have something special planned for NH. It's just, I'm, I'm really nervous, but it is her birthday, and I feel mm -hmm. like I wanted to call in and really give her something special, and really that comes down deep from a soul. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, give me a second. Okay. All right. Happy birthday to you. That was good. Darth, that was, wow. Fap. I didn't know you had that in you, uh, Darth Corgan. I have the biggest butterflies in the world right now. Mm. I think Mike H should be jealous right now because all the men have thrown themselves at Ann H. And, uh, yeah, Ann H is, I don't know how old she turned. I think she just turned 21, so congratulations on that. Uh, Darth Corgan, any last words? Uh, nothing much, man. Happy birthday, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes, Darth Corgan. Uh, since the call is coming in, and we can basically talk about anything. If you want to sing, our wonderful, wonderful friend Ann H, who she is really great. I'm serious. I am. Uh, I, I. I can't. There's not enough words to put together for Ann H. She is uh, basically around all the time. Uh, it is her birthday right now. Today is her birthday, and as a birthday gift, she got Donald Cowboy Cerrone to grab a win, and not only a win, a second round finish. So good job by Cowboy Cerrone giving the best best gift you could ever give to a loyal fan, H. And Ann H is very good in the Pick'em League, too. Um, all right. Let's – I'm going to take this a couple more minutes, and then we're going to wind this shit down. On Wednesday night, like I said before, Justine Kish will be on. Um, stay tuned. I have some surprises for you. Something was announced for UFC 223. There's a fighter on that card that we're going to bring back to the show over here. So stay tuned for that. Friend of the show is coming back. And um, UFC 223 is something. Did I say 222? It's 223. Anyway, UFC 223 is something that's going to be very special, and it is headlined by Khabib and Tony Ferguson. Real special stuff over there. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you are not subscribed to the MMA Holes, do it right now. Drop your fucking name right over there. Slap the notification bell so you know when we're live. Check us. Give us a follow. On social media ho over here at the MMA Holes is where you find us. And uh, yeah. You are live with the MMA Holes. What's your name and where you from? What's up, man? I figured I'd get on this shit real quick. There I had to go. get up off the bench. What's good? Jay Smooth live with the MMA Holes. What's going on, Jay? Oh, man. I'm doing well. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say I actually didn't expect Cowboy to win. I thought. 
I, I didn't think he would do too well at 170 when he first tried to fight at 170, but uh, he actually does well when he fights uh, when he fights cans. So that's that's a good thing. So he does have a chance. Uh, he shouldn't fight for the title at 155 because at 155 people were fucking him up. If he wants to get a title shot there, he should probably start fighting there again at least two or three more times. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but if anything, at least he stood in that last fight that he's still that he's still willing to go to war and he's not too war torn yet. So mm -hmm. he did open some eyes. Yeah, and you know, and that's the beating he took from RDA when he exited 155 is something that people have to remember. <laughs> he caught a fucking beat, like a big time beating. Can he get back down to 155 and be healthy? I, I don't know. At 34 years old, I'm not sure. I hope he can, because I kind of want to see him run around at 155. You know, I I wouldn't mind seeing him fighting those top guys again. Uh, so I, I'm on board. But yeah, you're right. Not right away for a title shot. I agree. Yeah, I mean, he does. He he still has the potential at 155 to do some good things. He just needs to uh, work his way back up again. That's all. Mm -hmm. And not and not fight as often as he did. Yeah. Because taking fights as often as he did was also a detriment to his uh, run at the title. Yep. He had some run. He really had some run. What was it? Hold on a second. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There were 14 fights where he lost only one. One fight out of those 14 fights. I mean, that's a fucking run. That is a serious run. 155 going into 170. His only loss was to RDA for a title fight. I mean, that was impressive. That was a lot of people forget that was a super impressive uh, win. You know, getting finished by Darren Till. I mean, you know, Darren Till is on another level when it comes to the size and everything. And this kid's a specimen. Yeah, 155 is probably where he belongs. So, uh, yeah, I'm agreeing with that. Now, Jay Smooth is live. Would you like to sing to Ann H? Well, you see, everyone else is singing, but you know me. I like to I like to do things outside the box. So I'm going to offer some words to Anne as she turns yet another fine age. Mm -hmm. uh, my my best words to her are, uh, keep the coat hanger in your back pocket because you've managed to go this far without kids. You should keep it that way because as fun as life is as fun as life is for you right now, it's only going to get better. Just keep kids out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two. Do whatever the fuck you want to do because we only live once and really it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. All that matters is what you think is it's your life. So do whatever the fuck you want to do. There you go. And the third thing and the most important thing, uh, even though even though you live in a place where, granted, you're like up in the mountains and shit and, you know, Oregon's a very uh, different different kind of country, uh, don't be afraid to smoke up all the grass that you can find there. I don't know if you smoke weed at all, and but if you if you don't, you probably should look into it because your life will be even better than it is now if you do. There you go. Uh, but yeah, all but yeah, all in all, just do whatever the fuck you want to do and have fun with yourself. All right. And, and also have fun with it, and also have fun with your husband because he deserves it too for putting up with you. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jay. Thank you for the call. All right, thank you. Jay Smooth coming in. The sixth man jumping in on the lines. And there you go, Ann H., if you're just jumping in. Ann H. from the 7% percent to birthday number one Cowboy Cerrone fan. Ann H. is wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. That's right. Now, in the chat, Jesse Bell Hill is our moderator. Make sure you go give her a sub. She did a swole show today. She came on. She conquered. And uh, Monday nights would never be the same. Wednesday nights would never be the same. And Friday nights would never be the same without JBH. So go give her a subscriber over there and uh, do it. Just do it. Let me know in the chat right now. If we can get a certain amount of ones in that chat, can we get Jesse Bell Hill to sing to NH live? Well, it could be via phone call. What do you guys think in the chat? Hit me with the ones. Let's load up that chat room with ones. And maybe we can convince Jesse Bell Hill. I mean, Ann H is part of the 7%, for God's sakes. Do you think we can get her to sing happy birthday to Ann H on her birthday? All right, guys. This is the time where the MMA holes have to speak. We need your voices. Shower the room with ones if you want JBH, our moderator. To sing happy birthday to Ann H. Shower those ones. <laughs> the ones are flying in. 
Oh my god! You guys really want to see it once! <laughs> The intensity is going crazy right now. Oh my god, there's so many ones, it's not stopping. Everyone wants Jesse to sing happy birthday. Oh my god, this is unbelievable. <laughs> all right, all right, yes. Okay, phone lines are open again. 516-522-0267. Jesse drops the one, but it just so happens to be the one finger that is up in the air, and there it is, the the magical middle finger. All right. You are live with the MMA holes. Hey, I know who you are. Welcome to the show. Yo, what up, Chris? How you doing, man? Steve Spire, San Diego. Hey, Steve, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Chilling, chilling, man. I was just kicking it, kicking it. I had a great time listening to the show last night. Awesome. Finally was able to crack top five in the goat milk. I figured I'd give a shout in. There you go. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that fucking Derek Lewis reaction was great. I remember I caught it, caught it later in the night on the on the watch back. Mm -hmm. Fucking awesome. <laughs> but uh, I've been hearing uh, I've been hearing you guys uh, dogging uh, James Vick a little, and I, he did dislocate his finger early in the fight too. So oh, did he really? Give him a break. I just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. When he goes, when he goes on, he keeps, continues his tear. It's like, mm -hmm. don't don't hop back on the bandwagon. That's the thing. I mean, if you look at a guy like Vic, he's finished a lot of people. He is a beast. He's huge for that weight class. Um, and if he broke his finger, I mean, there you go. He still got the win. I, I, I absolutely. I think he was like defending like a kick or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think but, that uh, yeah, he's the guy's the guy's guy sick? Do you think he's unfairly treated over there at one fifty five? Well, I think people have been ducking the shit out of him, and sometimes there's not really much you can do about that. Yeah. You know I mean, if people aren't going to fight you and they can play that game, you know, mm -hmm. he can't really do shit, but as long as he just keeps on whooping people's ass, dude, he'll, he'll, do, he'll get it. It's weird. I mean, the thing is, I mean, it's, it, that's just such a tough division, too. As good as he is, I could still see him losing. It's just there's so much competition. Sure. Yeah, the division is loaded yeah. up big time. And Vic, who sits yeah, at yeah. number 12, I have a feeling he might go up a couple of spots. But, yeah, you look at the division, and thank you for the call, Steve. Here we go. So look at the division over here, lightweight. Vic, so he broke his fan. I had no idea. You know, I, there's no volume up when I'm doing my fight reactions. I'm just punching chairs and acting like an idiot. But if you look at this over here, uh, Vic is sitting at number 12. I have a feeling he's going to go up a couple of spots. I really do. But look at who's ahead of him. Um, we got Dariush. You got Ayakinta, who's a, I mean, honestly, I think he's better than top 10. Michael Kies is up there. Nate Diaz still floating around. Kevin Lee at seven. Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Barboza, Eddie right, Alvarez, Nurmaga Madoff from Ferguson. Crazy. Marky! Can you please show Ann H the picture of Francis and Mighty Mouse that I sent you? Uh, the picture for her birthday. Let's see. I can't show it on here because unless you can send it, Marky, are you on Twitter? Send it to me and thank you, Marky, for the donation. I do appreciate it. If you can send it to me on Twitter, I can't on here on Instagram. Look at this bullshit. On the computer, I can't go to my private messages. No, I can't. Yeah, it's just hard. And just like I can see my thing, but I can't. I can't go to private messages on Instagram on my computer. So if you can send it to me on Twitter, over here at the MMA Holes on Twitter, and it's across the board at the MMA Holes. If you shoot me a thing on Twitter, I can definitely show you that. But yeah, definitely do that. Francis and Ganu. So anyway, yeah, getting back to uh, Vic over here. And here's Donald Cerrone. Hold on a second. What am I doing? So Vic, he's got some work to do over here. He definitely has some work to do. I'm not sure where he's going to wind up on Wednesday. We'll talk about it on Wednesday. But he's he's a badass. James Vick is is no fucking joke. He is no fucking joke. This kid over here with the um, what do they call him? They were calling him Lloyd from. <laughs> calling him Lloyd on Sunday. Oh my god. Anyway, still young too, right? What is he? Thirty. He's only thirty six three one fifty five with a seventy six inch reach. He's on a tear. He's on a tear. Darius is the only loss. Wow, look at that shit. All wins, and Darius is the only loss over here. Got caught in the first round. So, yeah, this dude, Vic, he's, he's a contender for sure. 
He's a definite, definite contender over here. Kevin Lee above Nate Diaz. What the fuck is that? Says, I'm the highway. Jesse is 15. That's messed up. Let's open up the phone lines at 516-522-0267. Last chances, guys. I'm only going a couple more minutes. Last chances. If you guys want to sing to NH, the wonderful, wonderful 7 percenter, well, sing her now. Where's the number? In the corner. 516, under the phone. 516 516- 5220267. Get in on the lines. Let me know your thoughts on anything right now. It's a free for all, and then we're going to take you to the Wednesday show. Thank you again for watching. 61 watching over here. We do appreciate that. If you haven't shared this video or liked this video, what are you waiting for? 60 people watching with 54 likes. That is unacceptable. Unacceptable. We need to get some more likes in this jar right now. All right, hold on a second. Here we go. You're live with the MMA holes. What's your name? And we know your name. <laughs> Welcome back, Billy. <laughs> um, I fought Francis, and I died. Uh, wait, hold on a second. So it happened already? You didn't even tell us it just happened? Uh, he came flying in through my ceiling, and he was like, uh, you, 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 want, you want the knockout power? I, I, I put you to sleep. And, and I was like, bam, and I, I fell down, and I, I woke up, and now I'm in hell. Oh, my God, you're in and hell. Fuck. Here, I'll give you a call. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the call. <laughs> thank you. All right. There you go. One-Eyed Billy calling in. 516-522-0267. Justin, Francis Ngannou has murdered One-Eyed Billy, and he's calling in from hell right now. So there you go. He's calling in from hell. All right. You are live with the MMA Holes. What's your name? Where are you from? This is Tony. Hey, Tony. Um, How you doing? So... Elias wants to be a ring boy, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. The majority of people that go to those events are dudes. Mm, so true. I don't get the point. He's going to be showing off for dudes anyways. You know what? That actually is a really good point. For Invicta, yeah, there is majority dudes there. Maybe a couple lesbians. So even the lesbians aren't going to want to see uh, Theodoro. But in, in, in all fairness, Theodoro looks like a woman. He has beautiful hair. Yeah, all he does is talk crap on Twitter. He needs to freaking work on his fighting skills and actually get a win. You know what? And it's funny you say that. This Theodore guy coming out of the Ultimate Fighter, he looked good in the Ultimate Fighter. I think it was in the Ultimate Fighter Nations. And he's just like a decision machine now. It's, it's he's, he's His fight's been terrible. Absolutely terrible. Do you, do you think he'll ever have a shot at being a contender down the road? Hell no. He's yeah. Canadian. He don't got it in him. <laughs> He's Canadian. Yeah, that's true. Those Canadians, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, right? GSP is a once-in-a-lifetimer. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. All right. Thank you for the call. All right. 516-522-0267. Get in on the lines. And that's actually a good point. Invicta, if you think about any of these MMA crowds, even though Invicta is, is all women, it's probably a 90% male audience over there. So, yeah. That was surprisingly the funniest one since Bobby Bush. Peace out, MMA hole. See you Wednesday, you sick fucks. All right, KJ Fury, be good. Peace. Jesse, uh, you don't call to other men. Sorry. Uh, what was that about? It says K, uh, Decider. Excellent point. Yeah, that is an excellent point. Decider, oh, too bad. I guess I'll just talk to you then. So, Jesse Bell, hello. If Theodore was a tranny, I would not hit that. It says Deathstroke. Yeah, Theodore, let me see if I can find the picture. Of, I did see the picture. Elias, uh, Theodoro. How do you spell his head name? All right, the Spartan images. Uh, let's see, we can find this picture. It's kind of, it's kind of cringy. Ring, hard. Fucking. Oh, here we go. All right. You ask and you receive here on the MMA holes. Because that's what we do. We make dreams come true. And that's right. If you're just jumping in, Elias Theodoro is a ring boy. <laughs> I didn't think <laughs> Oh, my God. That guy's not wearing a fucking skimpy outfit. But there he is walking around. Walking around the uh, cage as a ring boy. He's practicing. He's the next Ariane Celeste. Mm-hmm. No boys. That's a gay. This is the cider. Uh, who is going to AC show and then the BK show? Steve Johnson, I want to go to the AC show. I'm in. When is the AC show? I'm going to look at the... Uh, hold on a second. When is the AC show? Let's look at the calendar. 
Let me know in the chat when the AC show is. Atlantic City. When is that one? Mm. I know it's coming up. Let's see. Let me look on here. Uh, UFC. UFC. Atlantic. They announced it. UC, a, UFC Fight AC. They used to fight over there. Let's see what we got. UFC Fight Night. Mm -hmm. AC and Utica. No, no, no. Hold on. It's me in the ass. <clears throat> there we go. Atlantic City 2018. There we go. 2018 Boardwalk. UFC Fight Night in Atlantic City is Saturday, April 21st. Is it really? Motherfucker. April 21st. To be determined. Holy shit. Where is it going to be at, though? It says Boardwalk Hall. Where's Boardwalk Hall? Anyone on the East Coast going to that shit? Let me know in the chat. That is right after... We should do fucking two meetups. Let's see. UFC 223 is Saturday the 7th, April 7th. We want to do a meetup on the 6th, guys. Mark your cal calendars. If you're on the East Coast, there you go. Steve Johnson says April 21st. If you are on the East Coast, Jersey, New York, anywhere, Boston, whatever. If you're on the East Coast, Coast and you're close enough, uh, for UFC 223, or if you're traveling around the world, April 6th, we're going to be doing a meetup. It is going to, we're going to be giving out shirts and wristbands and shit like that. Uh, it's going to be outside of the Barclays Center for Khabib versus Tony. We're going to be doing that, getting drunk afterwards. We'll be live streaming. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll fucking destroy the fans. And then two weeks later, UFC AC. I might have to do something that weekend. If we can get enough peeps. If the 223 thing works out, we're going to do something in AC for sure. Awesome. There we go. It's on the boardwalk, says Steve Johnson. It's a sick venue, 12 feet from the Atlantic Ocean. Steve Johnson, is it outside? Call in if... If you know more about this, Steve Johnson. And what's up, Steve Johnson? I saw you in the uh, the comments section. You were doing some white knighting shit. I like that. I like when you white knight me. What's this? Let's come. Yes. Let's go. Everybody, come. 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 Everybody in the chat right now, come on, Rhonda. Come on, Rhonda! Let's go! Back. Back. Come on, Rhonda! Come on, Rhonda! Back. All right. Steve, show me Kenzie. this show right. F-O-O-K-I-N-G Canada. One big North Dakota with uppity bitches and their floppy pancake titties. <laughs> no, thank you. All right. Hey. <laughs> no, thank you, eh? Thank you, Show McKenzie, for the wonderful, wonderful donation. I do appreciate it. And Show McKenzie came on Rhonda twice. He came on Rhonda in the beginning, and then at the end of the show, he decided to come on Rhonda one more time. Steve Johnston says, uh, no, it's inside. So the Atlantic City fight is inside. I got you, bro. No worries. Thank you, Steve Johnston. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there you go. Good tune, says Brian. Come on, Rhonda, says Show McKenzie. There we go. <laughs> You know what I wanted? I wish I could see the reaction. I wish I could see the reaction of people that just like stumble upon the show. Be like, hey, this is an MMA show. Let's see what this shit's about. And and they're just looking and they're like, what is... What, <laughs> did someone donate to come on Ronda? Like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, Michael Anselm, what's up? Says the MMA host, Chris. I know that you don't like to reveal your picks early, but who do you have for the Khabib fight and Jesse Bell Hill? So Khabib... Is fighting Jesse Bell Hill? No. Uh, Khabib versus Tony Ferguson. I'm going to give you the pick of the same. I'm, I'm going to do it the same as I did last time. Now, I don't like to give my picks early, yes. But I've been doing it lately. And I'm sorry. I, I think that Tony Ferguson, I think he's going to win. I think he's just, he's too slick. He's too, too well-rounded on the floor off of his back. His stand-up game is slick. How he carves you up. His movements are... They could throw you off. A guy like Khabib that's charging forward and just trying to get you down. You know, his boxing has gotten better, Khabib, but he basically wants to charge at you, get you on the floor. There's just too many weapons for Tony, and I think Tony's going to be his toughest task. 
and Tony Ferguson for the win. That's what I'm saying right now. You never know, though. The fight can get closer, and Mystic Moss might change his mind. But right now, I'm still going to stick with my guns and go with Tony El Kakui Ferguson for the win. Maybe it's glued shut to Steve Johnson because you've never been penetrated, boy, says Steve. Okay. Come on, Ronda Fapp, says Ann H. I'll give it to Tony over Khabib, says Kenshi Ryu. Let me know in the chat what you guys think. I'm going to wind this thing down. We're going to take it three more minutes. If you guys want to do a couple of calls, last chance to do it. Get your likes in over here. Subscribe to the GOAT. Share the video. And thank you so much for those donations. You guys are awesome, man. I really appreciate it. Okay, Larry David's back. Michael Angelo, hope your legs are doing better. Oh, God, here we go. He's like a starfish. So, Khabib or Tony, let me know in the chat what you guys have. And that's the thing. When when fights are a little removed, you know, they're a little bit away, you're, you're going to flip-flop. I like to stay with my original pick, but sometimes you'll see something. You'll watch a weigh-in, and you'll be like, yep. The weigh-ins tell a lot. I've got a lot of my picks right because of the weigh-ins. If you notice, like last week, I only got two wrong in the whole card. So, watch... <laughs> Watch the weigh-ins. Watch the weigh-ins. All right, last call of the night. And what way to end it up with One-Eyed Billy calling back in. One-Eyed, welcome back from hell. Hey, Chris. I just wanted to call you and let you know, I broke out of hell. I'm out. Um, it turns out Satan doesn't like fat people. <laughs> Wait, no fat people in hell? This is unbelievable. Oh, dude. you. Oh, man. Nothing, hmm. nothing but twigs. I go down there and... I'm thinking, all right, I'm gonna sit down and have a beer or something. Nah, they all drink, they all, they all drink that low calorie shit. Yeah. Sparkling water. Mm. Oh God. Uh, I went and talked to the red man, and he was like, "I'll tell you what, Billy, I'll let you go." Well, that was nice. And uh, then we smoked crack. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you, One Eye Billy. Hey, One Eye Billy, do you have uh, any more songs you want to sing to Ann H before I let you go? Is there anything else you'd like to say to Ann for her birthday? Yeah, I'd like to verify that I do, in fact, do not smoke crack. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you but, go. Uh, happy birthday, NH, and uh, drink lots of beers, smoke lots of weed, mm. snort lots of coke. Yeah. And try try not to go to hell. <laughs> All right. It's not fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you. One-Eyed Billy calling in. Thank you. There he goes. One-Eyed Billy calling in for the last time, and that's the last caller. What way? What way to end the show than with one eyed Billy going in. He broke out of hell, thank God, and there you go. Smoke crack. Is this an SJW, a millennial Jesse on the phone? <laughs> Mystic Moss Beard is, uh, he makes Nightbot horny, in case you didn't know that. Crack ain't that bad, so Brian Roy just says it's not that bad. They only have Rolling Rock beer in hell. <laughs> oh my God, I am not a Rolling Rock fan. I used to drink it. There was a phase, like when I was in college, I went through like different beer phases, and one was Rolling Rock for a very small phase. And I don't even know. I don't even know why I drank that. It was it's, I don't know. It's at the Boardwalk Hall. I've taken many shows in there. It's a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful place. I'm the tour rigger. If you remember me, Chris. There we go. Oh, I am the highway. I do remember you, man. So who knows, man? If if UFC 223 works out, I'm seriously going to con contemplate doing the Boardwalk thing, and maybe we'll do a meetup over there. We'll grab some T-shirts and and bring it over there. I want to hang with you guys. You know, we'll hang out. We'll fucking get drunk. We'll do some live streaming together. I imagine that those motherfuckers that call in and this crazy chat room over here getting together for a couple of drinks. It'd be scary. Tony was the best caller of the night. Elias is a fan. <laughs> this is John Doe. There you go. God forbid we say the F word. We say whatever the fuck we want on this show because we are the MMA holes and we are all wonderful, wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. Thank you guys for watching. And once again, happy birthday to the beautiful Ann H. And congratulations for Cowboy Cerrone for getting the win. We're going to be live on Wednesday. I'm dragging Justine back on the show. You're not going to want to miss it. Justine Kish is coming back, and we're going to talk about that North Carolina fight. Okay? We're going to find out what was going through her mind when she fought in front of her home crowd and got robbed. She got robbed. Like, literally got robbed. And uh, we're going to see her emotions for that. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, supporting. The donations are on fire. Everyone was on fire. And always remember... Don't be an a-hole. Be an M-M-A 